story from you and you talked about was coining the term bench mob. Uh, what oh, was, yeah. What's the inspiration behind it and how is that so you got strength in the second well, bench mob is a term, um, let me make sure I get it straight. Didn't they use it on NBA team? Which team uses that? The Bulls? Okay, well, well, I stole it. I saw it on Twitter, it was trending, and I was like, ooh, bench mob. Oh, uh, we gotta get that for links. Um, no, I think it's just like, um, it, it, it really, I don't think people understand, and I didn't understand this when I was growing up, how much of a role the bench plays in a, in a championship team. It really is, I think, um, it's a huge factor. It's, you know, an X factor, you can call it whatever you want. So I just felt like, you know, um, last year I was thinking, I, I kind of compared it, our, our, our role is like the Angry Birds, but bench mob, you know, that's like, um, that's, that's what we are gonna be this year. And I think, you know, Jess and I, you know, uh, we're kind of the leaders of that. And it's, it's going to be, I think it's going to be huge, the bench, uh, the, and the confidence that we have now and kind of understanding what, what our role is and what we need to do. Uh, it was really easy. You know, I didn't really, it, it didn't take much thought. And the, the thing is, is, I was a restricted free agent this year. So it really wasn't up to me. You know, it was really kind of um, up to the links. And, um, you know, thankfully it was just a, a situation where they wanted me back, I wanted to be back, and, and it was great. You know, I think um, you always want to kind of see, you, you never really as a player, okay, put, put a value. How do you put value on something? And I just think that um, I'm just so happy that, you know, Glenn Taylor and, and the links really saw the value of me as a player, and I just want to live up to that. And it's, it, it's like a, it's a happy marriage. Okay, Sharday Sharday Houston is no longer with the team. She was always the leader of the victory dance. Oh yeah. So are you gonna take over that role this year? Well, I don't know. I think um, I've always I'm more of like a you know I like to be like the side part of it. I think Devereaux is gonna take over that. Devereaux is a very good dancer. So that's now a rookie tasking. It's a I think I think Devereaux is gonna really bring that. But I you know I'm gonna always bring it every game. I always bring the victory dance. That's you know that's like come on. Candice, how do you get? Uh, fans and media alike, you know, this whole season, not bugging you guys talking every single day about repeat, repeat, repeat. Well, I think that's, I mean, I don't, I understand why people are bugging us. I mean, repeat, repeat, repeat. That's on everybody's mind. That's on our mind. Um, I think that, you know, it's a day at a time. So sometimes it gets a little bit, you know, it gets a little bit overwhelming because, you know, we're thinking like, okay, we want to repeat, but the road to repeat doesn't start with you know, doesn't, it's not about talking about it. It's actually in doing stuff. Like, there's actually a reason why we won the championship. So we're really focused on that. But I understand why everyone's concerned. I mean, it hasn't been done in like 10 years. You know, so it's it's a huge task ahead of us. Let's not kid ourselves. So, I mean, I think that it's, I mean, I would talk about it every day too because that's it's on my mind every day. Um, I think that, you know, it's actually going to, it takes the pressure off because you've got a great shooter, you know, and anytime you've got two great shooters, it's like shooting is contagious a lot of times. You know, when someone else is making a shot, like, I don't know what it is, it's like a mental thing, but everything, like, the basket gets bigger for everyone. So Aaron's the type of player, she's going to make every single shot, you know, so you're like, okay, well, i got to make every single shot. And, and it's, like that, it's like that weird way where, like, competition brings out the best in everyone. So I think that's really what Aaron does. But more than that, Aaron's just, like, she understands the game. So it's like you, it's like, um, it's not just about, like, her shooting. You know, it's about, like, all the other facets. Are so. you sensing or seeing if there's still a hunger for this team? Yes. I say, you know, we, like, metabolize. I think we've metabolized it. Because it's such a long off season that it really, like, it just starts to, like, you know, it's just so, it seems so far away. It was last year, you know? And you just feel like stupid, like still being like excited about something that happened last year. You know, it's just like your hunger, just like it, it, your metabolism just speeds up. Yeah, last year to a certain degree, you know, when adding Maya into the mix, this team kind of had a target on its back last year. Yeah. Did that, do you think obviously going through that help you guys know what to expect from opponents this year? Absolutely. I think that we have a huge target on our back. I think everyone is so sick of the Lynx. <laughs> and um, I, I think the other teams are completely just like, I'm so sick of hearing about Minnesota. And I think they're going to have that, you know, focus. But the good news is, is that we have such great leadership. We have um, such a great sense of identity. We have such a great leader in our coach and our coaching staff. 
and everyone knows what their part and the roles on the team that we're going to be really, really hard to beat, even for the people that are absolutely sick and want our heads cut off. <laughs> It means party. No, I'm just kidding. No, it means no. I mean, it just it's you know anytime that first of all we have three players in our team on the on the Olympic team, so that's just like we're just so excited about that. You know, like I I am at least like I think it's just it's like it's gonna be overwhelming. Like we're like oh my gosh, three of the players on our team, but I think um you know a break in the summer you know but we'll we'll be we'll be focused we'll be working here. Coaches are gonna let us just you know relax, but it does change the what do you call it the you know, momentum of the season. It's going to be different, but I think we'll we'll cross that when we get there. We'll see how we're all doing. Like those on Twitter are familiar with your friendship with Skyler Dane. Oh, yeah. Dane. She has one more year left to expect to go high next year. Yeah. Are you going to instill any wisdom on her as uh, she will go to WNBA Jersey this time next year? Oh yeah, Skylar's like 21, going on 30. She's so like she's just like I've been I've been friends with her. Really, we've been really close since 2010, and I'm so proud of her. Everything she she just soaks things up like a sponge with everyone around her. She just completely just like shaped by by those. And um, you know, Skylar's gonna be great. This is, I told her how important just junior year summer is for her. She knows it. She's got just this this sharp, sharp, sharp focus. And uh, she'll be here. She'll be at some Lynx games, and you know we like really like to try to inspire each other when we're um, in our different seasons. But you know, it's just one more summer, one more season, and then. Oh, absolutely. I think, you know, Diggins and Wiggins would be like a dream come true. But, you know, it's like it's such a long time from now that, you know, I'll be 26. It'll be a totally different and life. Be, <laughs> and you'll be working on a three, four feet. By, by exactly. That exactly. <laughs> Dynasty. So, yeah, no, of course. But, you know, it's just you never, you know, things you don't ever know how things work out in, in this league. So I just really um, like I said, I just I try to encourage Skylar just really enjoy college because I think a lot of people want you know they want you to think about pro think about pro but there is nothing better if she all I want for Skylar to have is the senior year that I had at Stanford which was there's no there's no comparison I think that the greatest year of my life was my senior year at Stanford and you know there's there's nothing that can compare so that's what I want her to have. How do you compare you've had Olympic success at other levels compared to a championship in the WNBA? How do those two compare to each other? I mean, you well, won it all. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's nothing that compares to it. And just kind of like um, just this league is so revered by everyone in the world. You know, it just it's so powerful. And then just uh, um, it's something that you look like when I was 10 years old, I wanted to play in the WNBA when I was 10. Like it just started. And I was I was like really good at 10 years old. And I was like, I think I could play in the WNBA. But it just seemed like, no, I can't play in the WNBA. I never could make it. And then here I am, like we won a champ WNBA championship. This is something that I'll be able to have the rest of my life. No one ever can take from me what you earned. And so that's just something that um, I, I realize how special it is, but it's just each year, as, as you get older and older, it's just going to get more and more special. So it trumps a gold medal? Um, I don't think so. I don't think anything in the world could trump a gold medal. I mean, I'm still thinking about Carrie Strug in 1996. Like, right. yeah, I, 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 that's, I mean, I, I, I don't think I'll, I'll ever feel like I accomplished anything until I got a gold medal. But It's all about the gold, Candace. All about the gold, so. How antsy are you to get your ring and raise the banner, though? I'm pretty antsy. I want to see this ring. <laughs> I, I've been hearing about this ring, and I um, I can't wait to see it. So <laughs> hopefully it'll fit.